Hello everybody, this is the first video I've been making, well, I would make for a while, so, um, I know it's over a really weird topic that would normally not be on my, uh, channel, but it's on Halo, which is uh, actually a series that I quite enjoy. Uh, not recently, though. Last game of theirs that I actually liked was probably Reach, and then after that, uh, well, before that was Halo 3. And I'm kind of a mid-generation gamer, so, uh, I'm, I kind of, um, uh, am stuck with the, you know, the nostalgia games that came out between, I'd say, 2006 and 2012. That's probably my, uh, butter zone of games, because that's about the age range I fall into. Uh, anyway, so that's not what this video is about. This video, uh, is about the ethics of the Spartan program, as you probably read from the title. Now, I'm gonna have to make a few videos on this, because it is a pretty detailed project. Now, before I can get into the ethics of exactly, you know, what the Spartans did wrong, I gotta just give you people that don't know an overview, because for some of the younger people, they might not really know. I mean, I personally didn't know I had to do a little bit of research for this video, but now I know. Um, so basically what happened was there was a project called the Orion Project and this happened I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what years it happened but it happened well before the uh, uh, Halo 3 and well, all the Halo games because they took place relatively within the same time frame um, you know, pretty close to each other at least um, if I'm wrong about that you guys can tell me in the comments but anyway so the Orion Project started and that was to make super soldiers to quell rebellions and everything like that uh it didn't work so they shut it down so some and this just sounds ridiculous but like some 170 something like that years later they started the project back up again and again it worked a little bit and they sent them on a few missions and although they never failed their missions it was expensive and it really wasn't worth it it was uh, the orion project was to try to make super soldiers i don't think i said that yet i should have i should have said that anyway yeah they were trying to make super soldiers and it worked kind of but it was really expensive and just not really practical so they dropped the orion project again now later though those were the spartan ones also um the orion project mark ii if you will um was the spartan ones all right and then after that uh it took a little while again but then they started it back up and then there was the spartan 2 program and this is what we're going to be discussing later about the uh you know the ethics of things which I'm going to look at from an objective viewpoint. So when I tell you this kind of stuff, before you get any negative connotations, you gotta you got to think about the situation that they were given. All right, so the Spartan 2s were essentially just kidnapped children that they put, uh, there's 75 of them. Uh, they were kidnapped children, all six years old, and they took them to some place. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but it's basically like they were going to live there, and they flash cloned their kids. Um and they would stay with the parents like the clone would stay with the parents even though the clone wasn't perfect and it would fail after a few years and it would it wouldn't be the same uh, so the parents would end up finding out but yeah anyway so the actual kid was taken to um, this research facility and they were trained basically from that age until their augmentation which I'll get to in a minute uh, just everything they taught them the best education available, they taught them how to kill, and, you know, everything that you would know if you were going to be a super soldier. I don't know the extent of it, but, you know, th use your imagination, that kind of stuff. Um, and so they took them, and they did all this kind of crap with them. And uh, when they were, I'm not exactly sure, I'm, I'm giving you an overview here, I'm not telling you the exact details, there's definitely better videos for that, but... Um, so yeah, then they did the augmentation, which essentially makes their bones way stronger, their muscle density way higher, um, some other crap I can't think of right now. But it was really painful, um, and that was the least of their worries. Um, 30 of the 75 died and crippled 12 others, so it's pretty dangerous. Um, but the, the ones that survived, uh, John117 included, uh, otherwise known as Master Chief, um, he survived, and these were the Spartan 2s. <clears throat> now, after this, I'm not really sure because I haven't been paying attention to any of the other, well, not paying attention, rather, but I haven't been all up to date with the rest of the Spartan program. So, Spartan 3, 4, and I'm not even sure if there's a Spartan 5 program, I have no clue about, but that's really not what we're getting on about because they never did this again because it was so controversial. Um, maybe not for that reason. It might have also been really hard to replicate and, you know, get the same results on the same kind of thing. But, um, so the Spartan 2s were very few in numbers, but they were, uh, 
well, they basically came to save the human race. Um, they were the ones that fought on Reach and that kind of stuff. So there wasn't very many. Like, there was 75, 30 of them died, and the other 12 were crippled. Everybody else, I'm not sure what that adds up to. I didn't do the math. Um, I don't know, it's like 40-some. No, not quite. Anyway, um, that's, that's beside the point. My point being that they ended up being very few in numbers but very skilled. Uh, Master Chief is an example. Uh, they fought on reach and everything, but, you know, even though they were, you know, fabled to be, in, be invincible, they really weren't. Um, but anyway, to keep the, the morale up, they were telling everybody that they were invincible and that they couldn't die. Uh, and, I mean, even though they did die, they, they did a pretty good job of not dying, too. Because uh, if, you know, a, a few dozen soldiers can, you know, almost defeat... Well, not a few dozen soldiers, that's not really an accurate... Uh, accurate claim when you consider that there was a whole bunch of other soldiers but you know 12 you know 12 few dozen uh you know spartans could defend all of reach for a while that's that's pretty good that was obviously the uh, game halo reach that goes into that uh, so yeah spartan 2s were pretty pretty good uh and even though they ended up starting to die off and everything um but the the lady who led all this her name was um uh, uh, catherine halsey and she was the one that invented the fabled uh Mjolnir armor, which uh, is what Master Chief uses, but it's it's not just it's Mark V, it's Mark V Mjolnir armor. That's what it's called, but it's not just Master Chiefs because they were all essentially the same thing, just different looking. So yeah, uh, all all the uh, Spartan armors that you typically see, <coughs> Halo Five, uh, they're all basically the same thing. <coughs> that not when I coughed Halo Five there, it's not because they were essentially the same thing. I don't, I don't even know what to think of that. It looks like a carnival. Um, but what I mean is that in, uh, you know, in Halo Reach is when the first game that you see after uh, Halo 3 where the armors look different, really. You know what I'm saying? Like, before, I, mean, I don't know why I said Halo 3, but out of all the Halo games up to that point, Halo Reach was the first one to have any different looking armor is, is really I guess the best way of putting it so um but in essence they, it was the same thing so it looked different performed the same task um so yeah that's basically the uh, uh horribly brisk overview of the Spartan program and horrible detail so there you go for the people that don't know that's essentially how it goes in the next video I'll be covering why what they did was unethical <laughs>